There is a saying to be true to yourself, that being authentic is so courageous, that we should be who we are not what the world wants us to be, what the people around us, our friends, our parents or society want us to be. And while these sayings all sound logical and beautiful to me, I questioned, do I really know who authentic me is? What does this actually truly mean? And why do I feel the need to answer this question? Especially in a world where it's easier than ever before to grasp all sorts of opinions and impressions, not just those close to us. The question of who authentic me is does not seem to be answered so easily. All these questions led me to speak with my friend Olga, who is an executive coach and has supported many individuals, also in their 20s, in either connecting back to their authentic selves or made sure that they don't lose their authenticity along the way. So today we'll discuss how we can figure out who we are authentically in our 20s. For the start, I would love to first of all get a bit of a better understanding of what does it actually mean to live authentically. We think it's a point, it's a dot, it's a moment, but it's actually a journey. So what you and I think of is authentic of us today might not be authentic of us in five years from now, 10 years from now, etc. So it's a journey. It's a journey that we're going through. It's an ongoing question that comes back. It's more, am I working towards becoming more authentic or am I working against becoming more authentic? So this is one thing. The other part, like how I can answer you this question, my daughter has a children book and it's about three animals. I think it's like a horse, a bear uh, and a rabbit. And they meet during winter and they decide that they want to take a journey into summer and the story goes the following that they they walk through the different stages and at some point they meet a fox at some point they meet a wolf and they collect the team and then the next stage they reassemble the team and someone stays where they were and someone joins them again so this is also the big story of authenticity because in the beginning of the 20s you're asking yourself who am i authentically usually you have like three different animals with you. <laughs> and usually they are who we are genetically, what conditions we were raised in, meaning like what schools did we go to, what like society, etc., and who are my parents. It doesn't only mean like a certain race or a certain age or whatever, but also like what they believed in, what they told us, how they treated us, etc. But further down the line we go, we also accumulate other animals. We accumulate past versions of us, our past bosses, our past friends. And at certain points, we also, when we ask this question, what is an authentic me? We might need to throw away some animals out of this journey, <laughs> right? And say like, you know, you're not walking with me anymore. And I think this is overall the very complicated, but very simple answer to your question. It's not static. It's always moving. It's also a team that's being reassembled while you're moving. And it's also the question whether this team is moving towards the goal or against the goal. But it's always, unfortunately, in every single point of time, we are authentic. We're just authentic to that team that we either work with or work against too. How do you think, can I get to know who I am authentically right now? Are there questions that I can ask myself to find that out? There are two ways of answering this question. One is you always know who you are, always. And you might feel you don't, but you always know who you are. So one of my favorite TV shows is called Blind Spot, and it starts on, on the Times Square in New York City. There is a huge duffel bag so a huge like a sport bag police comes to that starts looking into the bag and they figure out there is a naked woman inside of that a live naked woman they bring her to like interrogation room and they bring her a psych therapist and she sits there and she says you know my my consciousness is lying uh, like i have no clue who i am i don't know who i am i forgot everything someone put me in the middle of Times square no clue and what he does, he takes two cups and he says, do you want coffee or tea? And she says, I want a coffee. And he says, you know who you are. So at every single point in time, even if we, we, we really forgot everything, what kind of came with our background also, we know intrinsically, do you like coffee or tea? Do you like to have an porridge in the morning or a warm sandwich? And this is, I think, where you need to start. 
right? The first basic level, there are always you know who you are. And then the second way how to answer this question is what makes it important right now in your chapter of your life to answer this question? And usually when you answer this, this question, you start figuring out maybe what's missing. Maybe a decision you're trying to make and you can't make it because you're a little bit lost. Maybe there is certain information you don't have. So something now in your chapter of your life puts this question up and asks you to regroup the team. I can give you my example again. Like I, I work constantly with um, coaches and therapists myself, right? And with the therapist I currently work with, we talk a lot about my grandmother and like grand grandparents and what they left in me. Because I know a lot like what my parents left in me, but like grandparents, apparently, they know showing up as well. <laughs> it's like your never ending story. Everyone is showing up at some point. But this is the time to regroup for me, right? To say like, do I want to take the view on the world that my grandmother put in me because it was triggered by certain events right now? Do I want to have that response? Or do I want to have another response. And if I would ask myself, my answer would be, it is important for me right now because I don't want to carry that. I don't want to carry certain experiences that they had and they innately gave me through my childhood with them, right? Because I interacted a lot with my grandma. I don't want to take it with me. I want it my way. What do you actually think? How can we be authentic in the different roles that we have in our lives? You totally need a common ground. Right? And your common ground is your values and your common ground is what you know about yourself, what is true, right? And sometimes it's not the same things the parents thought that is true. If you are as you are and you're not wearing any like drastic masks on your face, actually the energy you're spending on just being is minimal. But I guess what I'm meaning and what you're asking as well, how will you not become inauthentic in a way while being different in different situations. And I think here it's really about the distance you want to go. So you have a core and you have a ground and you have who you are. And then I can give you an example that, that it makes it very easy to explain. So I, in my profession innately, I need to be very extroverted. Before I was PR, marketing, business development in the hardware industry. So presenting a product, talking about the product, talking to journalists, being on stage. Then I was a managing director or um, VP of sales. So a lot of extroverted stuff that I do is my job. But innately, I'm a very introverted person. So for me, it's an effort. For me, it's a job. For me, it's if I want to be good at what I'm doing, I need to be extroverted but it will never become my core i'm very aware that i spend a lot of energy into doing that and i'm very aware that in the time where i recover so that's the distance i'm going and that's the distance i'm going for a reason because i know that i want certain results i know that i want certain success i want certain uh, way of living and then always asking myself a question is that investment that i'm making and becoming a little bit less me is worth what it's bringing me and whether that's actually up to my values. You just already mentioned that our common ground is our values and also what we know to be true for ourselves. Maybe we can dive a bit more into how we can actually get to know our own truth. Even when you're young, you still have life experiences. You have gone through like hardships and you've gone through really good stuff. and you know where you like tea or coffee and this is like the first place where it starts like really acknowledging acknowledging what we're carrying with us what is this precious thing that makes us us what are we like really about and also having knowing my truth is to say how i want to be treated that's another part and treat it internally how i want to treat myself and I, how i want people to treat me and then i think we some kind of forget and this is this will sound really woo right but it, it is like this we carry generational experiences inside of us so even if you think that you know i never went through that inside my lifetime no 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 your parents parents of your parents they they raised us and they had experiences like i can give you an example like grandma right my grandma was 14 years old when she went through war right I never went through war, but I can connect to her experience and know how it feels for 
a child of 14 year old to go for a war. I think being really certain that, you know, whatever answers we're seeking, we might have them inside of us. This is also part of the truth. The tricky part comes when you speak the truth, <laughs> right? I think that the, the problem is not like knowing the truth. Sometimes the problem is being in a dialogue with another person with another truth and and showing yourself and saying no and saying yes and saying this is the boundary and saying this is what i like this is what i want are there also certain exercises that we can actually do to get a better understanding of our own truth i think it strongly depends on the learning style of a person and the next question i would ask you how do you learn the best i would say there are four different uh, variants how people learn the best this is basically a quadrant right so um, you either learn by theory or by practice and then you integrate either by theory or by practice and then you have people that basically are in all the quadrants so someone is learning by practice integrating by theory learning by theory integrating by practice etc and for certain people it's definitely getting a book getting a journal going on amazon seeing like what workbooks are there maybe filling them in for some people workbooks for some people it's experience and then what we need we need two stages we need to first acquire information so observe learn see and then we need to integrate it into our doing just an example for you how it can be done but there is no again there is no right or wrong way i think it's just what works best for you and try things out because with with the conscious in mind that if something doesn't work for you not because you're a bad person or because like i dropped the workbook not because i'm inconsistent and i'm lazy or anything but just because it doesn't work for me so being like again this loving relationship to yourself there's so many different ways and you will definitely find the way that works it's just trying trying different things and lastly i also wanted to touch up on the topic of values how do you think actually can we better figure those out we spoke about the inner truth values in the truth but how you can notice that First of all, you usually see it on people's calendars and in their pockets. Like, I mean, wallets, money. Where do they spend money? Where do they spend time? And this is usually also where you see people not following their values. Like, for example, if someone looks at their calendar and says, like, it's like, I really don't like how my time is spent, it means they're going against their values. And then you start a conversation, like, for example, okay, how do you want to spend your time? Do you want to have more family or do you want to have more job? Or do you want to have something else? My point here is a little bit different. My point here is that we are getting ourselves way too busy with this exercise, right? With this exercise of, okay, we need to know our values, otherwise it doesn't, doesn't work. You have values. It works because you have values and you're doing something. You, you were like on a calendar, like you can see that you spend your money somewhere, spend your time somewhere, like look what you're already doing. What is the doing? And it's more about, does it serve me to know my values? So I do know my values, right? Am I get triggered by someone saying like, oh, I, I wrote down my values. Maybe I'm feeling like, oh, I'm not enough because I don't know mine. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that some of these thoughts of Olga were helpful to you to figure this question of who am I authentically a bit better out for yourself and also to know why that's actually important to you. So thank you again and I hope to see you very soon in one of my new and next videos.